says, hi, Heather, I am curious about how you've changed since going from going from my fitness pal to the recovery tracking. Is this something you would recommend for someone who has worked on their weight a long time? What are the pros and cons? Thanks. So what I love is when I actually learn from, <laughs> from some of these products I'm putting together for you guys. So, so what happened was, is I had an epiphany moment. I was working on the fight the weight gain um, te uh, teaching toolkit, which is not currently available yet. It will be in another week or so. And I was working through all the lessons that I wanted to share about this idea of weight gain, of gaining weight back, right, that you had previously lost. And what I really got caught on and what really caught my attention is the difference between the expert's mind and the beginner's mind, okay? And what I mean by this is an expert sometimes doesn't see their own faults. They don't see the things they're making mistakes on. They don't see the fact that they kind of eh, haphazardly do things from time to time because they've done it for so long. And I always go back to the driving analogy. When you turn 16 and you were learning to drive, it was new. You were a beginner in your mind. You were, you were looking at everything through beginner's lens. So everything was scary. You probably braked hard. You probably hit the gas hard. You probably, if you had to switch gears, were doing it really roughly. You probably were super paranoid as you drove down the road because you're trying to get used to everything and that heightened sense of awareness, right? The longer you drive, <laughs> if you're like most of us, you got a sandwich in one hand, a drink in another, you got, you got your, your podcast on in your ear, you're listening to it, and you're kind of like driving to work and you don't even remember how you got there, right? Because you are more of an expert at driving. But because you are an expert, there's probably things you do sloppily. You don't do them as well as you did when you were hyper aware, when you were hyper uh, perceptive of what was going on around you. Well, I have now been tracking since, I don't know, probably 12 years now, 12, 13 years. I've been tracking. I've been either tracking points. I've been tracking calories. I've been tracking exchanges. I've been tracking something, right? And what I had noticed was I was very much into that expert's mind. I was doing it. I was going through the motions. I was tracking and journaling. But I wasn't really giving it very much focus and I wasn't even really learning anything from it anymore. It was kind of like this rote repetitive thing that wasn't really in this moment serving me. And so what I have learned in this journey is that when we are progressing and when we are changing, and I was having this uh, realization almost on a nightly basis that I was overly full after dinner. Every night I was overly full and I did not like the way that felt. And I said to myself, you're overly full, you're tracking, but you're tracking to the calories that, you know, you believe to be true. And you're really not, you know, necessarily making any major progress with your weight. So what if we took a totally beginner's focus on this and did something different and forced your brain to learn something new and actually gave you a new perspective on this, right? And this is why I went with the not tracking calories, but now I'm doing more of the photo uh, tracking where I'm taking pictures of my plate. And again, because I've been tracking for almost what, 13 years at this point or longer, um, I, I kind of know inherently what portions look like. I inherently have a repertoire of foods that I like that are reasonable calorically and things of that nature. What this is actually giving me, so if you're a fly on the wall, um, I'm not weighing and measuring my food. I'm, I'm putting, I should say, I'm using measuring cups and utensils, but I'm not using my food scale. My food scale hasn't uh, had new batteries in it since I started this. Um, I'm using measuring cups and utensils. I am leaving a lot of food on my plate because what I'm doing is I'm giving myself permission to eat whenever I'm hungry. And then I can stop when I'm content, but I can always eat again. Whereas when I was pre-tracking my calories, I had the whole day mapped out. So in my mind, I knew if I didn't eat all my lunch, there was nothing else planned for the afternoon. And so thus I needed to feel content or overly full after lunch. And so it was kind of like, because I was afraid there was nothing else coming, I was eating all the food. I didn't necessarily rationalize it that way, but that ultimately seems to be what was going on. 
Um, and then what else is really interesting is I'm really tapping into when am I hungry? And what am I hungry for? Really kind of following more of the traditional intuitive eating principles uh, without all of the political hype behind, like, you know, because I'm sure some of you have noticed in the intuitive eating, there is the intuitive eating and there's the body positive and there's a lot of, um, can be a lot of political heated charge there. I personally don't subscribe to that, but I do like the intuitive eating principles, the idea of waiting till you're hungry, stopping when you're content, eating what you want, um, not really putting too many restrictions. But I'm finding that ultimately I'm not eating all my food, that's usually on my plate. I'm, I'm allowing myself permission to eat when I'm hungry, which means I'm taking smaller portions. I'm not getting that overly stuffed feeling, which is pretty cool. And my weight's staying stable. I'm not tracking calories and I'm feeling really content, but I'm also focusing on some beginner mind. I feel like I'm learning stuff. I'm becoming a, more heightenedly aware of what I'm doing. Whereas when I was just tracking calories, because I had done it for so long, I was going through the motions, but not really benefiting by learning anything. So that's kind of how I would explain it. There's no right or wrong, good or bad. You should be doing this because Heather's doing this. It's a, where are you at in your journey? For you, tracking calories might be that very heightened awareness you need right now because of the phase of the journey you're in. If you've been in it for 10, 15 years and you've been doing it all that time and you've maintained your weight and you've been doing all things, you might be in a place where you need to be challenged in a different way. Um, and so keep in mind, keep, keep on your own lane, know what you need for you, but when it doesn't seem to be serving you or when you feel stagnant or when you feel you're just sloppily going through the motions, maybe ask yourself, is this still serving me? Or is there something I need to learn and grow in more? And that's the idea of the expert versus the beginner. And I personally think in order to become really good at things, you have to be willing to be knocked down to the beginner. So that's why I let go of my, what was it, 2,247 day streak on my fitness pal. I went back to zero days. I let go of it because I realized it wasn't, it, it, that track record means nothing if I'm not benefiting from it in some way and if I'm not learning and growing in some way. So just holding on to a record to hold on to a record isn't really what I'm striving for here. I'm striving for personal development, I'm striving for personal growth, and I'm striving for a sense of happiness and contentment in whatever I'm doing. And if that means taking, going away from something I've stuck with for a while and trying something new, that's what it means. And then I may go back to it at some point, right? You can't, you can't be locked in and think, well, this is the one thing I have to do for the rest of my life. No, self-awareness also means knowing sometimes you do need to grow and change and try different things. And that's the part of this whole process that I like. So I hope that answers the question well.